Dolphin is two decades old this year, so I thought it's about time I made a guide for beginners. Dolphin doesn't support Windows 7 or 8, so if you're still using those operating systems, please don't ask how to get the emulator working on your PC. With that out of the way, let's get started. Finding the official website is easy. Once you're inside, just ignore the beta versions and head on down to the development versions instead. The latest releases are always at the top, so select the relevant version. In my case, it's the Windows version. Once the download is complete, copy the archive to your desktop. Then, simply extract the folder inside the archive and paste it onto your desktop. For the purposes of this guide, we'll install Dolphin here, but you can install it wherever suits you best. The first time you run Dolphin, it will ask you to authorize communication with the developers. This is harmless, so just say yes. After that, we can start configuring the emulator. Under the General tab, make sure to enable cheats. From there you can scroll down a bit and change the update setting to multiple times a day. This will ensure that your version of Dolphin stays up to date. Next, we move to the Interface tab. The first thing to change is the language, which should be set to whatever you prefer. My choice is English. The theme isn't that important, but I do like to tweak the emulator's appearance somewhat. After that, allow Dolphin to download game covers from GameTDB. Mouse cursor visibility should be set to never. This will hide the cursor when you're playing games, as it should be. Under audio, there's nothing to change, so leave it alone. However, under Game Paths, you must direct the emulator to where your game folder is installed. In my case, I already have a Dolphin folder on my C drive, and that's where my games are. Once the folder is selected, you'll notice your emulator's view screen starting to get populated with games. After this, we're done with the basic configuration settings. Click Close at the bottom and restart the emulator. It's time to move on to the graphics settings. The first thing to change is the backend, which should be set to Vulkan. After that, enable VSync and start in full screen. As for shader compilation, hybrid Uber shaders will give the smoothest frame rate. Under enhancements, change the internal resolution to at least 1080p. The rest of the settings are optional, but I like to change the output resampling to bilinear. That concludes the graphics settings. Let's move on to control settings now. The first thing to do is to select configure. I highly recommend using a controller, at least for GameCube games. Select your device from the drop-down menu. In my case, it's X input. If you have a PlayStation controller, select direct input instead. Unfortunately, you'll have to map the buttons manually since Dolphin doesn't do it automatically like other emulators. Once you're complete, save your settings under a preferred profile name. Then simply hit close. Setting up controls for GameCube games was relatively simple, but for Wii, controls are a bit more involved. Luckily, the latest development versions seem to have decent default settings. For Wii games, I recommend using a mouse and keyboard. You don't have to, but I found that controllers weren't nearly as precise, and the mouse is more fine-tuned for motion controls. However, if you are going to use a controller, relative input must be enabled. Otherwise, the Wii cursor will behave erratically. Anyway, the way the controls are set up, about 80% of games should work fine out of the box, at least if you're right-handed. But if you're left-handed, the extension should use arrow keys instead. That covers Wii controls. Hit close when you're done. The only thing that remains is to change the view screen to grid view. This will give a more pleasant appearance, in my opinion. If you found this guide useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.